Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tia No, the last seeds of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Muggle Lover. And right now, we are wrapping up the worker focus for us. The factories within our nation are not ideal. The Vaz has other, used other less professional words to refer to their state. And he's not incorrect. We've done a lot and worked towards the ultimate goal of a paradise for our workers. However, lots of work still has to be done to improve the factories and equipment within them for the worker. Class cooperation is necessary, and there's no more important class to get on our side than those who seem to uh, work away in the industrial centers of our nation day and night to create the very finished goods that, that, that are necessary for the barest function of civilized living. The workers are ones are, are the ones who started the first revolution and the second. There will be no third so long as we ensure that they are on our side from the get-go. And to do this, we can improve their working conditions and equipment, perhaps with Japanese assistance, which would be very good. Very, very good. we got some comments to go through as well. As all as one for Holy Russia. That's not too bad. Work the blood. Ooh. You get more recruitable population factor, which I do like. And a new economy? That's not bad. I, mm -hmm. Stuff isn't bad. But ultimately, though, I want to get whatever improves society... And then maybe do some other stuff. This stuff can, is good and all, but we could probably wait to do this. GDP, GDP growth, really doesn't mean too much to me right now. And this one, ooh, poverty gets worse. And taxable population goes down as well. Ooh. 14-hour mm, workday, no minimum wage. Ooh. Survival of the fittest. I do like that, though. But let's go and do the Vaz vision. I have a vision for you and for all of the Russian people. I envision the Russian nation working together in economic harmony, no matter if they are the wealthiest industrial magnate or the poorest of farmers. All Russians can achieve rich richness and dudism. I envision a state united not just in mission, but in a message, with the body of the Russian people consisting of the individuals who make up our economy. We will not falter, we will not break. No one, not even the Jew, can shatter the Russian body and spirit. Thus we must reforge ourselves in a corporate vision, to cast down the destructive nature of the Bolshevik system and the chaotic legacy of the years following the Union's collapse. Our people will toil away for countless hours, in mind, body, and spirit, giving their blood, sweat, and tears to the Russian state. We, the Russian nation, will do this. To, we will give this to our state because we know that our sacrifice will allow Russia to prosper. A hard day's labor. Tikhon Nikolaev stumbled down the street like a drunken man. A crowd of similar workers streaming from the factory doors. How long was it? 15, 16 hours? He lost track after what felt like a couple of hours after overtime began. They are preparing to purify Russia, upper management said, and the factory and its workers needed to sacrifice as much as they could for the motherland in the coming weeks. And so he spent the entire day and a good deal of the night supervising the increasingly exhausted workers in their labor. He stared out at the darkened streets, trying to remember which one was his and summoning all his energy in his legs did not collapse there and then. After an eternity of walking, he got to his house near the edge of town. Stumbling into the door, he looked at the clock. 11.20pm. 17 hours of work, he needed a break. Creeping into the kitchen, he opened the pantry and took out a bottle of vodka and drank it straight from the bottle. How much more would he have to sacrifice for the motherland? How many more nights would he be like this? How how much would he see the, of his family? Everyone must do their part for the motherland. Absolutely. So I, I do apologize for that little pause there. My cat wanted out of the room because he doesn't like me talking, apparently. <clears throat> but that's alright. That's totally okay. Up next, we'll do collective economic management. The Jew-influenced free market of the U.S. of A. has already begun to bring ruination to the nation, while the government-controlled Bolshevik method has shown the laugh laughability of its failures. It's clear that for the management of the economy, one cannot bend too much or too little to corporations and the free market lest the people fall into degeneracy, or the Jew takes a sneaky hold of the nation. We must set up a policy of collective economic management, where the government works closely with the corporations that we have encouraged and begun to build from the grassroots upwards. This, in effect, will see the economy managed jointly by the corporations and the government, the latter setting limits and reasonable limitations meant to protect the nation, while the former will drive economic growth and innovation. Cool, and we're working, doing pretty darn well on our cities. Nice. Not bad. So getting that one done, because I want to get through this one, get some more political power, which is really good. Elite tax exemptions. I like that political power, as well as income rate. But then, an all Russian corporations will prop up domestic corporations in the Far East. Not bad. Gets a little bit more GDP, more industrial equipment, and more factories, which is what we really, really could use right now. Camp 46? I love Camp 46. The camp was precisely as Rajevsky had envisioned it in his sketches. Neat, orderly rows of wooden barracks, fortified towers with snipers and machine gunners, a modern factory built on the latest Japanese designs, and a perfect square of vicious barbed wire that delineated the camp's boundary. It could have been any better in his imagination. Last but not least were the inhabitants, dirty, half-naked, and emaciated with hollow eyes. They dared not look up at the vases as they passed them by. 
How's productivity? He nonchalantly asked Steklov, who had averted his eyes from the slaves and held a handkerchief over his mouth. The mine mining camps out in Yakutia have doubled their output in the last month. Steklov swallowed his bile before responding in a slightly quavering voice. How the Vaz and the guards could simply ignore the stench of the open grave beside the factory was beyond him. Ah, uh, well, I'm happy to report that this f facility is meeting the set quota, my Vaz. He swallowed again before continuing. I'm not sure these people are capable of. These aren't people, Steklov, Steklov, Rojevsky muttered, turning to his subordinate and finally noticing the man's pale, sickly face. What, this bothers you? He snorted before resuming his leisurely pace back towards the gates. Get over it already. You don't see me fainting like a little girl whenever Mira swats a bug. I'm fine, my boss. Steklov lied. Just a little under the weather today. It is as you say, of course. Rojevsky just smiled silently in response, all together quite proud of what his people had accomplished there. Built by hate, but paved by indifference. Ah, I love indifference. It readjusts taxation policies. What homeless person can buy a factory and start it up again? What peasant can begin to manage a business? And what factory worker can use his knowledge to start an industrial firm on their own? The wealth, like it or not, is concentrated in the hands of a few individuals, many of whom remain from our hobbin days. Yet, these wealthy individuals struggle under what we consider to be an unfair taxation system, which encourages them to save their money instead of spending it on the good of the Russian people. We should slash taxes for these wealthy individuals and their associated businesses so they're encouraged to invest further into our economy. We can compensate for the losses incurred into the government's treasury by simply further increasing the tax rate for the sectors of society that don't matter as much as the economic buildup and success. What are they going to do? Complain? They could try. They could definitely try. We do have a cup of coffee here. Even though I did make a slight mistake and ha made decaf coffee. That's alright though. Normally we don't have it, but that's okay. Oh, more weekly manpower, less consumer goods, a little bit less stability, sign us up. Yep, that's definitely decaf. Wow. Okay, new model. Despite its proximity to the Japanese border, the city of Rajevsk has been considered the economic capital of Rajevsky's Far East for quite some time. Here, a number of prominent industrialists have met to discuss the future models of how they would run their massive conglomerates. A number of very prominent figures were there, all of the members of the RFP having grown fat off of war profiteering for the first stage of the reunification. These industrialists, while none of them prominent party officials, have been chosen to head the first Russian mega corporations that Rajevsky has envisioned. Their ideological dedication to the cause, long-time membership in the party, or donating enough money all qualified of them for the positions. As they convened to discuss the future of the mega corporations, they sat down in the conference room that would determine the economic future of Rajevsky's Russia. After some intense deliberation, an incredibly controversial idea was floated among the industrialists. The repurposing of forced labor for the purposes of vast and rapid economic growth by the mega corporations that the Vaz had envisioned. Surely not the most humane idea, and one that emulated the German model for labor and the industrial sector. Many of the industrialists look, took an in initial distaste for the idea, however. As it was discussed more and more, almost all of them realized of what the benefits were being proposed. Labor and manpower was virtually free, while it would surely decrease the quality and quantity of the goods produced. It would also mean a net profit for those tasked with creating exactly that. As the industrialists and their tenants indulged in coffee and luxurious, exotic foods imported from Japan, they barely thought of the thousands of lives that would resign to horrific conditions in the factories that they believed would ensure the Vaz victory. The beginning of a new system. Oh, we love it. And in all Russian corporations. The office was empty except for the Vaz and Konstantin Steklov, economic minister for the Russian state, who had worked light into the night in preparing the announcement for the formation of the first Russian mega corporation. While well, it was funded and controlled by the private sector, mainly wealthy emigres who had survived Rajevsky's purges. The government, named Steklov, had done a significant amount of legwork to coordinate the merger of a number of firms and individuals. The pair sat in a large office, drinking the night away and celebrating the beginning of a new era for the Russian economy. The Far Eastern conglomerate, DNK in Russian, would be the first of many Russian cor mega corporations that would have the aim of dominating the Russian economy and forging a strong Russia. The Russia of tomorrow waits for no one, eh? Soratnik Steklov? Of course not. It waits for nobody. We get a whole six more factories. That'll be very good next. Very, very good. So it is 68. Let's keep working on some gun stuff and just making sure we can get more breakthrough because all we have are infantry and we do have 22 divisions, which is not bad, just not very good. Just not very good. Indonesia has defeated Indonesia. Good job, Indonesia. Man, I'm, I'm, I, I might have to go back and uh, redo a few things just because the CSR, they're kind of thick with manpower. And they have a lot of divisions. They have a lot. Now, they, we can't tell how many of, of who of what they got. But still. Oh, that's not bad. 20 and 17. That's pretty darn nice. Not going to lie. So we just readjusted that. We get more daily political power, which is very good. Wow. two Over 2.2 a day? Yes, please. Now, what are we missing for equipment before we do anything else? We need more artillery. 
But everything else is looking good besides cast. We're actually making cast, which is kind of kind of cool. So this stuff, uh, factory outputs not bad. Max factories in a state. I do like that, but I don't want to hurt our society yet too much. Ooh, I want property. I think right now we should go focus on here. So I asked you guys yesterday whether we should do quality and quantity or look to the future, and ultimately you guys chose look to the future, in which we will get some better production for tanks, which we'll use against whoever wins in the f further western side of Russia. So, as much as I kind of want to do quality and quantity, at the time of this recording, you guys chose to look to the future. The sad reality of our position in the Far East is that it is the region within Russia that is the most devoid of people. This means that even from the beginning of our foray back into Russia and the Dark Years in Zaya, we've always struggled to put men in the front lines. While our position has been solidified in the Far East, our manpower problems have not. This, however, does have to be an issue, or does not have to be an issue. While some believe that the path of mass conscription is the best way to solve our manpower problem, others believe that the best way forward is to emphasize a modern army with a highly mobile force, modeled on the Blitzkrieg strategy employed by the Germans some decades ago. A mechanized soldiery supported by tanks and highly integrated with their air force will ensure that the lack of troops that we have will mean nothing compared to the lightning quick strikes that, we'll per that we will be able to perform. We get a bunch of land action, and we do get the best of the best. So our organization for divisions all improves. And recovery, which is really good. And don't get me wrong, I would love to get plus 1% more population, but it's still okay. And infantry equipment doesn't really matter too much. But I do want to grab across the tundra quickly. But inspecting the workers once we get some more technology. Good. So it is 68. Let's grab some more of this, too. We want more factory output. Inspecting the workers. It was a cold, bitter morning in the center of the city of Rajevsk. Uh, Vladik Vinogradov. So waited his vase chilled by the early morning snow. He looked towards his uh, chauffeur before checking his watch, 8081 The vase was light. This was far from surprising, knowing that the proclivities of the supreme leader, but Vinogradov couldn't help but worry that the meeting had been forced to, re to schedule was little more than an opportunity to purge the nascent industrialist. However, as the vase all-black car came into sight, Vinogradov felt a sense of relief. As the Vaz stood from his car, Vino Gradov moved to meet him. The pair of men met with a handshake. Soraknik, it's good to meet you, Rajevsky said to Vino Gradov. And you, my Vaz, Vino Gradov responded. Just during towards the brick and mortar factory behind him, belching black smoke upwards, he continued, shall we? The pair toured the fa factory or the facility with Vino Gradov giving the Vaz the in and out of how the factory worked. He had truthfully been worried about the Vaz's reaction to the condition of the workers. The factory had them working virtually around the clock, with little to nothing in the way of br breaks or food. The workers looked withered and sad. It was hard to tell which one were slaves and which weren't, but Vinogradov aptly pointed out that slaves were only given the most dangerous jobs. The boss took everything in, almost always silent, posing the occasional question. As the pair once again exited the factory, he stretched out his hand for a handshake. As Vinogradov took it, the boss gripped his hand tightly. Very good work, Vinogradov. Very good. They shall work harder, my boss. Even harder. Uh, let's see. Apparently, uh, one of the comments from yesterday, uh, you guys said, once we go down this international tree, we do get a new place from Manchuria, so that'd be really, really cool. Owns Billows Bizan. Uh, oh, nope, that was, that's wrong. There you go. It's over here. So we do get to take this area, which would be very nice. And we get hopefully some more manpower. We might, it might not be cord though. This is kind of a problem. That's all right. Uh, let's see. Basically, someone asked if Konstantin Rojewski is basically our new Hitler. Pretty much. Pretty much. And apparently someone said from, I think, the second episode, that Rodzewski, that I like to say Rodzewski, it's Rodzewski, it's more of a SH sound with a DZ, so I'm doing the best I can. The best of the best. When the Russian fascist party had been split and the Tsars threatened us from their rotten base in China, we couldn't afford to turn away any man from service. The result of this was that, for quite some time, our army contained some of the less than savory elements of society. This included drunks, incompetents, and even drug addicts. The situation had become so bad at points that the so-called army functioned more like a group of bandits than a coherent armed force. No more. We may be suffering from a lack of manpower, but we are a proud nation with a proud army. And if the free all-Russian army is to transform itself into a force willing and able to execute highly sensitive blitzkrieg maneuvers, we need to clear out the most problematic individuals to achieve an army that's truly the best of the best. Oh, I don't know what this do. Nice. Not bad, because now we have 20 and 14. Oh, it went down again, huh? That's weird, okay. Well, whatever. Across the tundra. Hit harder, our Russian hammer, and strike the, like God's thunder. May it fall to dust, satanic people's commissar. Come up, brothers, with us, the Russian banners nosy. Or noisy. 
Over the mountains, over the valleys, true Russian is flying. Our people may toil endlessly, but our investment into the army has finally paid off. The free all-Russian army with the reforms that we put through is the pinnacle of the achievement. An invincible force that will be the sword to the Vaz's arm and putting to the torch. The Zionist Bolsheviks who have thus far prevented us from extending our rule towards the rest of Russia. For God, nation, labor. Oh, we must just do that immediately. Nice. And we're going by some artillery. We have more than enough PP now, so. Actually, propaganda. That's nice and all, but we don't really need it. And we can do this within five months. So that's actually really good, too. And then what? The free all-Russian navy? We can kind of probably ignore the navy. So, uh, a strong army might not be bad. Let's do a proud army to finish off the land doctrine. In the darkest hour of the Vaz's journey to national reunification, our troops did what they had to. We couldn't simply afford to do anything else. Commanders were made to accept the f that fact that the doctrine they were pressed into using was for the unit organizations barely larger than civil militias. Now that we're in control of the Far East, however, things are much, much different. We sit at the precipice of greatness. For the first time in a long time, we can afford to have our commanders focus on real doctrine, and our armies will be that of the highest quality. Modern doctrines, modern armies, a modern state. This trio will ensure for, uh, for us victory in the coming years. God, nation, and labor. If you have to read about this again, please go right ahead. Excellent. Nice. Very, very good. Keep building, 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 though. <clears throat> and in the hands of Russia, we could do that. I can't... Why am I going down there, though? Uh, let's do this one. As all is one for Holy Russia. I have heard today that her people, the workers, the farmers, the industrials, and so on, have begun to take the first steps towards working in harmony in a corporate system. Not just an economy, but a system where the Russian nation operates like a human body, with a heart, muscle, brains, and all the rest working in conjunction for both one another and for the good of the nation. We must not forget why we strive towards this. The Jew and the Bolsheviks seek to divide our nation. They encourage us to forget our purpose and destroy our God. Our uniting behind the common banner of economic harmony and ultimate unity in the face of desperate times will ensure not only the survival of the Russian people, but our thriving. Do not go about your work and livelihood with your heads down and hearts heavy. Remember why you work. We are forging a united Russia, one that is not burdened by strife. Remember always, we must work all as one for holy Russia, God, nation, and labor. And we get more GDP growth, which is cool. Let's grab some more defense. That's going to be super necessary where we're headed. We get so much PP. So much PP that I wish we could just convert in instantly to improving this stuff. And we'll go from disgruntled veterans to widespread cronyism, which isn't that much better. You do get 5% more division organization, which is good. You actually lose max planning, which is weird. And you get 5% more division recovery rate, which is okay. Other than that, it's there's not much there, so. <clears throat> the next improvement is not that great. But, you know, also it's like an improvement no matter what. Good. So industry, planes, and some gun stuff, which is always important. Always, always important. And then we'll come back over here. Let's see, Japanese designs. We could use those plans, actually. <clears throat> but the hands of Russia. With their immediate issues settled and the Far East back in the rightful hands of the only true Russian fascist or all-Russian government, we can finally focus on one of the most important things in our bid for reunification. International diplomacy. While the U.S. of A. has long been in the grip of the international Jewry, indicated by their obvious and insulting support of the renegade Matkovsky, there are a number of other powers that we can reach out to in the hopes of recognition and support for our righteous cause in the reunification of Russia. In the West lay the Nazis, the models of our very own internecine civil war, and to the East are benevolent and long-standing patrons of Japanese. The boss has already assembled a better diplomatic corps that will be used to embark on foreign missions if necessary, and has begun writing a diatribe denouncing the powers that are the tools of the Ju Jewish shadow state. Cool. I like some be better jet fighters. Nice. More modern casts. Not bad. Getting better, 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 better. Alright. Yeah, that'll be good to do. This stuff is all okay. I really don't mind getting more planes, but it's not that many more planes. I just don't want to do this yet because it hurts our stability. We get more max factories, but I don't want to hurt our society with poverty and industrial expertise just yet. But even though... Ooh, that'd be really good to get. Work the blood. I mean, that's good as well. Free repairs are really good. Research speed does go down, though. So, Hands of Russia. Now over to Germany, our old benefactors. We can use that war sport immediately, so... The Japanese are many things. They are a strong race, a generous people led by an emperor whose administration has gone leaps and bounds for our movement. Many of our soldiers still fight with Japanese weapons while our officers and blackjacks confer with Kenpai Tai agents. To deny the connection that our movement has with the Japanese would be nonsensical. Thus, should we not lead into the relationship that we already have that was cultivated by our Vaz and his peers for decades? The Japanese are close to us, both geographically and diplomatically, if not politically. And if we see closer collaboration with them through economic deals and military assistance, perhaps we can even get some of our Russian land back as well as diplomatic recognition, which is super, super important. Keep spending, guys. Keep spending. So, okay, in cooperation with the classes. And my brave, brave Russians, all of you who have long suffered under the communists, the Jew, and the anarchy that they have caused... 
soon, shall soon be released from your chains as our movement sweeps westward. Our party's number surge as all true Russians seek to serve the Vaz. The splitters couldn't stop us, the communists couldn't stop us, and the Jews won't stop us. The Russian people hunger for fascism. Not as the Nazis delivered upon us with fire, steel, and blood, but a fascism for the people, not against them. And I tend to bring to them just that. A system of a harmonious class collaboration where all Russians work together for the betterment of their nation and their race. Remember now, and remember always, my people, for God, nation, and labor. Today, the Vaz once again took to the balcony, the same one that he used to announce announced the conquest of the Splitters and the Tsars, delivering a fiery, rousing speech to his people, both a symbol below and across the radio waves. He promised the people the beginning of a new era of economic prosperity and the creation of what he calls class col collaboration. Closely modeled on the Nazi economic system that Hitler had created and nurtured decades before, Rojevsky had promised to expand mega corporations and promote the corporation or cooperation of the lower, middle, and upper classes. While some international observers have markedly negative reactions to the Vaz promises, comparing them to the beginnings of what would end up as a bloated corpse of the German economy, it seems that everyone within the all-Russian government of the Far East is a lot more happy to go along with the Vaz plans, with those who are once willing to speak out either having been purged long ago or simply too afraid to publicly say otherwise. But only time will tell. Only time will tell, of course. No problems here. And do we have any divisions? What do we get rid of one more? We do have 25, which is not bad. Once we have a certain number, then no matter how many divisions they have, it won't really hurt us too much. Even though these guys are only 20 combat width, so... Yeah, it could be better. And that does, we will, once we get enough army speed, we will also make some uh, tank tank divisions. So, and I do I did start trying to make some divisions here. Obviously, these are not forty combat with tank divisions, but we're working on it. We're definitely working on it. Keep spending, spending, spending. Cut, 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 cut. Nice. Wow, look at that GDP, fifteen billion. Wow, and eight eight point one percent. Nice, very nice. Oh, look at this. Oh, are we, are we back? Yes, yes. That other stuff doesn't really matter too much right now. Congratulate Japan. A mutually beneficial agreement. Japanese recognition. Economic assistance. Ooh, I kind of want to do all that stuff. I kind of want to do this now as well. Poverty gets worse. Well, we'll kind of improve it. Daily political power goes down, though. I don't want to hurt her PP yet. You know what? We'll do all this stuff first. And then we'll come back down here. And then we'll do all the rest of this. So, congratulate Japan. It has already been well established that the U.S. of A. is in the grips of the Jew. Uh, oh, did I read this one? No, who already begun to use the American industrial base and gigantic economy to destroy the work of those who worked so hard to free themselves from the Zionist plots. But was it not the Empire of Japan whose steadfast emperor and fanatical servants bravely fought against the Americans and their Jewish puppet masters during the Pacific War? Not only fighting them to a standstill, but defeating them, standing triumphant over the American behemoth. Great minds think alike, and there can be no greater minds than those of Japan and Russia. A perfect example of how compatible our two nations are. Our future lies with the Japanese. The strength of the Asian people will not be undermined under the cosmopolitan onslaught. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Excellent. It's not great, but not too bad. I'll take it. Might as well. Construction speed, yes. Equipment, yes. Poverty, yes, please. Uh, weekly manpower, sign us up. Ah, screw, we'll do that one too, because we don't have to see that one. There you go. And fire, hire foreign instructors? Yes, please. Can we buy some more Japanese stuff? Trucks? Uh, we already have enough trucks. And it is November, so we must be ready. Ooh. You know what? Uh, is this worth it? Probably not, but why not? We'll get more infrastructure and slightly increase the GDP, so. Congratulate the Japanese. Congratulations, Japan, for doing a job well done in the past war. Nice. Not bad. Even though that's $7 billion, that's really bad. Japanese recognition? Ah, as you have immunity... Mutually beneficial agreement. Now that the Japanese and their allies in the co-prosperity sphere have formally recognized us, we can look east in order to improve our industrial situation. The Japanese has of yet to disappoint the Vaz in their generous donations of manpower material, however. With a new relationship with the Germans, the Great Samurai now redefined, the Vaz has seen it fit to ask Tokyo for more than just guns, economic development, in the form of industrial equipment, and the means to assemble and use it. Of course, this equipment is not free, it comes with a rather hefty price tag, that is, the free reign of Japanese companies within our territory, surely. The Japanese understand, however, that our two a relationship could that surely means that the Japanese companies would respect our markets and allow our own companies to work alongside their own. Hopefully, we have a thousand manpower. Look at that. Memories of Hobbin. Look, here's a good one. Casimir said with a smile. He held up the open photo album so the bartender was standing across the bar from him with the last could see. Uh huh, came the bored sounding reply. Here's your pint, sir. A tall glass of foaming beer slid into view, but Casimir was too deep in nostalgia to notice. He went straight back to flicking through the album, smiling at a little at every notable photo and memories it brought up. He gets to remember the fleeing across Siberia with his father to an officer in 
Admiral Kolchak's army. First to Vladivostok, and then to hop in once the Reds arrived and started rounding up old whites. His old man had died shortly afterwards, half mad with grief and calling out to his lost comrades. With his last breath, he had implored Casimir to find the monarch and motherland's true defenders, join the ranks, and fight to the death to reclaim their new home. Now, seated in a bar in Irkutsk, Casimir felt that he had finally succeeded in his quest. This. The peace of his home city, liberated from Reds, was what he's been fighting for all these years. The street brawls in Halbin, the voyage on the rickety old Japanese destroyer, the bloody battles against splitters and communists. It was all worth it for this, for the glory, for the boss, for Russia. He had a place in history, and was more than proud of it. It was worth any price. Good. And economic assistance. Another great victory for our boss. The Japanese have accepted our proposal. After a few small revisions regarding their market requests, they have eagerly, gleefully even shipped off the industrial equipment to reports, complete with the compl compliment of Zaibatsu representatives who would instruct their Russian counterparts on how to operate the machinery most effectively and efficiently. Already, the Vaz has declared an eternal friendship <clears throat> with the great samurai, and the black shirts have already begun to direct st dock workers and preparation for the equipment's arrival, as well as scout out perfect places for factories. There's a lot of work ahead of us building and operating these factories, finding people to work in them. However, this is a large step in strengthening our relationship with Tokyo, which is very good, and very soon we have to prepare for war. Very, very soon, actually. Because it is almost 1969. It's a very nice number, but still. And it, Oh, good! Uh, very good. Now, it doesn't give us that many more benefits, but... Oh, better division training time. Oh, we get more organization. We lose planning. And Navy intelligence to others basically means nothing to us in TNL, but prepare for war. And here we go with this stuff. Just because I wanted this as fast as possible because we do get some manpower here. They lose some war support, which I do like. Um, Where's that manpower? Recon Company, Army XP. There it is, there. Oh, yes, please. Oh, yes, please. And we have no more men. Uh, stuff. Cold days, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. And Grand Showdown, please go right ahead as well. This happens every time we have to go fight the enemy, so... It is what it is. A mutually beneficial agreement. Very good. And we can only get uh, 0.92 every day, which is not too bad. Special delivery. Customs Officer Uzaki looked over the shipment papers extra thoroughly. A shipment like that from the north? The only things that usually cross the border from the chaos in the north were malnourished refugees afraid of the bullets of the border guard and moonshine vodka that tasted like you could become blind from it any second. But a whole cargo train of chromium? He slowly looked up from the unshaven Russian man in a surprisingly clean uniform. So, Mr. Uh, Dragovich, these are 20 wagons of prime chromium slated for arrival in the home isles by rail to Busan and shipment to Hiroshima, the man inst instantly recited. Well, thank you for doing my job for me, you rude bad word, Ozaki thought. He maintained his composure, though. Indeed, the shipment could, should be good good to go. Courtesy of the internal friendship of our nations. You and your crew, however, will have to stop here and turn back, however. Im immigration and laws apply, as unfortunately we don't have an exception for your government yet. The Slavs face with prices. What? But the next train of Rodzhevsk that goes through here is in two weeks. We are in the middle of nowhere. I am sorry, sir, but it can't be helped. I am sure sufficient accommodation will be found. Ozaki resisted the urge to grin smugly. I will call Zaya, Dragovich groaned. Unfortunately, there are no landlines left connecting to that area. Hope you enjoy your stay, that is all. And as an enraged Dragovich stormed out, Uzaki glanced over the paper one last time. Do they really think we're equals? Silly Russians. With allies like that, but at last the Chromium arrived in time. We get Japanese trade, we lose the resource efficiency gain, which makes sense. We get worse consumer goods, and trade to your opinion factory goes up, but eh. Whatever. Actually, I'm not sure that's going to really help us. Apparently we're making radar already. Do that. Keep making those civvies. And we have more civvies to make as well, so. Whee. Of course, the radar is going to be a little bit more important than civvies, so. Boom. Boom, boom. There you go. Nice. Wow. Look at that. Minus 1.2 billion. 8.8%. Very good. 6.8%. 6.8%. For billing up at Japanese recognition. Our diplomatic caressing and praising of the Japanese is not going to notice, nor has a vast amount of resources that we now sit upon. With some skillful and careful maneuvering, the Vaz and a team of his most skilled and veteran diplomats, tempered by years of Russo Japanese relations in Habin, have begun a draft proposal to the Japanese asking for recognition. While the treaty would be hard pressed to be accepted by the Emperor's finest, we are willing to negotiate some economic concessions in return for the international diplomatic recognition and a future friendship and cooperation. But even achieving the recognition would go a long way to legitimate a rule in the war world's eyes, and it opens up further possible negotiations with our friends in Tokyo. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 we want that one. We definitely want that one. And let's go ahead and grab some more artillery. Do we need more artillery? Let's see. Artillery is what? No, we're actually okay. We almost have a th roughly a thousand. Oh, a thousand pieces. Look at that. Seven a day. That's really nice. Happy, uh, good job, LBJ. You, you got it elected. 
So, yeah, let's get some more land forts first. That's going to be super important. Uh, Japanese recognition. <clears throat> Do we need an event here? No, we don't. Oh. And then off to Tokyo. Now that our relationship with the Japanese has uh, progressed to war, I and mean, we have begun economically involving ourselves with the Prosperity Sphere members, the boss has proposed one more sit-down with the Japanese diplomats. This time, instead of recognition, it's for the matter of Outer Manchuria, better known to the Russians as Prim Priyamuri. Seized by the Japanese during the collapse of the Soviet Union, Priyamuri has had a short but incredibly troublesome relationship in the hands of its current owner, Manchukuo. Outer Manchuria, as the Manchukuo administration has seen fit to dub it, it is filled with naysayers and bandits, at least according to them. This is likely according to the boss because those are the either rabble-rousing Asiatic bandits preying on the inefficiencies of Manchukuo's pitiful police force, or intensely patriotic Russians who seek nothing more than to join the all-Russian government, of course. The Japanese will demand more of the same economic concessions, but the boss is more than willing to give them that. So be it. Fine with us. Very good. Even though I'm, I'm more concerned with how our military will function and perform compared to what we're doing here so keep training if we need to that's so good training is always good to do um poop relations oh actually you know what? let's open that one back up because we can get some bonuses to we have so much pp that i don't mind doing this stuff so that's fine with me just because we can use whatever we can at our advantage at our disposal to improve ourselves oh <gasps> manpower Japanese recognition, nice. Up to Tokyo. The great question. Constantine arrived in Pyongyang, accompanied by a number of his closest allies and bodyguards, the leaders of the Russian fascist party. <clears throat> for too long, he'd been forced on the run, always watching for traitors to the Russian people from the Bolsheviks and the Germans, no, no longer. Would he be another warlord among the rest? Some deals would have to be made with the Japanese, yes, but their recognition would surely bring any Russian on the Pacific coast, even those American back pirates, to his side. His men had spent decades long among or along the Amur River. The bustling city was a sight they missed from their homes across the former Soviet Union. After a chauffeured ride to the center of the city, he arrived at the governor's home, where he, along with the Japanese foreign minister, waited at the door. Constantine felt out of his place among the refined aristocrats of Japan's bureaucracy, but he would have to charm them. I am pleased to meet you after so long, minister. Cool, and actually, just in case, places like this, all four of these divisions, I'm going to convert immediately to... Uh... Do we have 40 combo with? We should. We have some manpower for that, but we do have to save some manpower in reserve, so. These guys are actually real, real 40 combo with, so that's really good. A new global presence. Although it took more than a day to reach the Russian fascist party, Konstantin Rozhevsky and his followers celebrated in Pyongyang with all the luxuries the well-kept city provided. With international recognition and from the Japanese Empire no less, the all-Russian government could achieve dominance over eastern Siberia through the threat of Japanese intervention, not to mention the large quantity of supplies and intelligence the Japanese would provide in return. As he returned back to Amur, he was greeted as a hero as he was. Many felt despair since the split with those dudes in Magadan, the growth of communism once again in Russia, and the rage from anti-Japanese bandits. But these would happen no more. No longer would he be another warlord, but the Vaz of all Russia. Sky's the limit for the all-Russian government. Very good. And let's grab some more. Oh, 10% more soft attack is so good. So good. Oh, 8.9%. That's really good. And then our new provinces. There's a saying in uh, Blagoveshensk that a man is safer in the pits of heck than he, than he is leaving city limits. Despite the Japanese having decided to give us back control of the Priyamuri, extending our administration throughout the large swaths of territory we were granted has proven troublesome. The cities, what few there are, are filled to bursting with destitute homeless or worse, as well as an out-of-control drug trade and rampant organized crime. The countryside, however... Is even worse. Territory is evenly controlled by Russian bandits and Korean communist insurgents contesting one another in a series of absurd turf wars. But this is Russian land once more, and it will be again. The Vaz has made a speech about the indomitable will of the Russian fascist party, and it's assured victory in Priyamure. Even if the Vaz's enemies are bandits and exiled Koreans already, trucks full of the most brutal black shirts have begun to arrive in the region, preparing to end the anarchy that reigns. Outer Manchurian issue. Oh, we can't do this in yet. Since the reunification of the Far East now seems to be the perfect time to negotiate for our territories in outer Manchuria, regaining these lands will be a large propaganda win for us domestically, and abroad in the more Russian territory we hold, the more legitimate we may appear. Let us approach Japan for the territory's possible reintegration into Russia. Sending an envoy headed by Rodzewski himself to Tokyo should hopefully do the trick. Surely they'll be happy to give us a territory. We are on very good terms with them diplomatically. While we may have to give something in return, we expect nothing less than an agreement on equal terms from our diplomats. Rodzewski. We'll even go personally to make sure that both us and Japan receive a good deal. Why wouldn't Japan view us as equals? The glory of Russia will be reclaimed. I'm going to wait and see if we can wait a few days to do this one. So We have 26 divisions now, which is very, very good. And is it going to fire the trip to Tokyo? 
Rojevsky and his delegation exited the plane and headed for their designated vehicles. A wondrous city, Tokyo, seemed to have grown even larger since the last time Rojevsky visited. Skyscrapers, trains, and cars surrounded him as they drove through the busy streets. He hoped that he would be able to find the hotel. Over the next week, the negotiations for the return of Ottoman Manchuria to Russia would commence. Rojevsky was confident that their territory would be returned. They had gotten this far, hadn't they? The Japanese wouldn't have invited such a large delegation to Tokyo if they weren't interested, however. Japan may ask for something in return. We have large deposits of resources now in our control. Perhaps a share could be offered to Japan. Rojevsky would be happy to give anything just to regain more of Russia. An interesting offer. Which is probably not going to fire just yet, so it's going to do overtures to Germany. Now that we've secured the Far East and declared the all-Russian government, we've been able to legitimize ourselves in the world's eyes. We can finally contact our brothers to the West, the Germans, who have been thus far one of the most active participants in the destruction of the Jewish forces fighting for the creation of their own world order. While it is true that the Germans may be wary of a united Russia, especially one that will be str as strong as the one that our boss has envisioned, Rozhevsky has indicated that he is willing to grant pr preferential resource use and other minor concessions in return for German economic and military assistance as well as, perhaps even more importantly, diplomatic recognition as a rightful Russia. A delegation has already been selected from among the RFP's most esteemed and ideological diplomats. All that's left is to send them off. Very good. Send them off and see what happens. This is a great question. As the meeting with the Japanese began, the Japanese were very interested in our offer of resource rights. Perhaps too interested, in fact, now that the Japanese have requested the rights to all the resources, not just a limited amount we were, were, we were ready to give. Well, Rojevsky is fretted by this. He has no choice but to agree. Out of Manchuria must be regained, and Rojevsky needs the support of the newly liberated territories in the Far East. Besides, giving Japan the resources would surely increase our relations even further and show that we can be diplomatic. Perhaps this would be open us up even to more options for us with the Japanese in the future. So, with the reluctance, Rojevsky has decided to agree to the Japanese proposal. While well, it may hurt us now with the loss of a much resource-rich area, surely it will be better for us in the long run. Cool. Hmm. Now that's nice. We got 86 steel. Reclamation achieved. With the delegation and the Japanese coming to an agreement, our Manchuria has finally been returned to Russian hands. The official handover was conducted in the province and our garrisons have moved in to replace the Japanese. Major celebrations have been conducted in cities all over the Far East in a speech by Rodzewski, and the capital is met by hundreds of thousands of joy citizens. The goal of a diplomatic victory has undoubtedly been achieved and support for regime has risen. The lands, there have been far more boons than just reclaiming of former Russian lands, however. Conducting a successful diplomatic negotiation with a superpower such as Japan has greatly increased our legitimacy on the world stage and within our own nation. More and more people are be begging to support Rodzewski and the RFP government. Unfortunately, not everything is perfect, and within hours of our ownership of the province, terrorist, terrorist activity has been reported. It appears while Japan has given us back our former territory, they gave us a bandit problem too. Our black shirts are already on the case, having dealt with multiple bandit problems in the past, and we believe the terrorists will be a small stint in our great reclamation. Who cares about bandits? Let's celebrate! Nice. And something's hurting us here, because we're trying to increase it, but we can't do this anymore. Slavery, private healthcare, poverty? Eh, whatever. How are we doing? The radar's doing well. We're still building up more civvies, because honestly, like, this is looking really, really good. Like, this is ridiculously good. For the most part. <clears throat> Our new provinces. Good, good, good. Dear Germany, to the foreign minister of the mighty Greater German Reich, salutations. As a leader of the esteemed Russian fascist party, it is my great pleasure to bring wonderful news from the Far East. Our armies have triumphed over the decadent Judeo-Bolshevik dogs who once soiled this land with their disgusting presence, bringing victory to the National Socialist cause and undoubtedly redeeming Russia in the eyes of the world. With their presence here secured, I now extend my hand to you and your mighty nation in friendship and solidarity. As we are both nations who closely follow the tenets of the late great Adolf Hitler, it would make a great deal of sense to reach common ground in diplomatic terms, no? Regrettably, our state still struggles to attain recognition amongst the nations of the world. No doubt this is the work of powerful Jewish elites who would like nothing more than to see our movement ground it to dust before it can truly challenge their reign of terror over the world. <clears throat> Germany, however, is different. Your mighty people have rejected the Jew and their insidious plans for global domination, and it is because of this that I reach out to this great nation for recognition as a true heir to Russia's legacy, a legacy untarnished by the darkness of Judeo-Bolshevism. Although it is indeed true that our two peoples have not seen eye to eye in the past, perhaps we could use this opportunity to begin a new chapter for Russo-German relations, dutifully united as ideological brethren. I shall await your response with great enthusiasm. Yours, Konstantin Vladimirovich. Rozhevsky, Vaz of Holy Russia. Perfect. Now to wait the response. <laughs> and they get a strange letter <laughs> event. Cool. Denounce the elders of Zion. <clears throat> According to the records of secret Jewish Zionism, Solomon and other Jewish learned men already in 929 BC thought out a scheme and theory of or a peaceful conquest of the whole universe by Zion. As history developed, the scheme worked, was worked out in detail and completed by men who were subsequently initiated in this question. 
These learned men decided to conquer the world for Zahn with the slyness of the symbolic snake, whose head was to represent those who have been initiated into the plans of the Jewish administration, and the body of the snake to represent the Jewish people. As the snake penetrated into the hearts of the nations which it encountered, it undermined and devoured all the non-Jewish power of these states. Wake your faithful Russians, bound to the state and your vase. <clears throat> Wake all of you to denounce the elders of Zion across the Pacific. Marionetting, the so-called leaders of the free world, as if it was a puppet show for children. These are the men who tout democracy as if it makes them strong, not weak. Denounce these fools who slave away for their Jewish masters. We're on the horizon. Oh boy, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Winner takes all. Pretty much. And we must be ready. And at this point, we have 29 divisions. Not bad. Not bad. So, let's get it down to 3 for now. we got to save that manpower. Silence from the Reich. The office of the Vaz had it, ha often had its furniture changed and moved around, seemingly erratically, by the orders of Radzewski himself who often experimented with the best ways to lay out his desk, drinking chairs, and artwork. Pre presently, the desk sat in the middle of the room closer to the back window, which looked out into Rajevsk. Across the entire room, tucked away into one of the corners, was a trio of drinking chairs and a small table in between them. While Rajevsky sat behind his desk, his foreign minister, Spetskovsky, sat in the chair facing the vase, quietly observing the temperamental dictator. How many days has it been? Rajevsky asked. Seven, sir, Spodkovsky replied, pausing before he spoke, the words only reluctantly leaving his mouth. Two or three seconds of silence passed as Rajevsky's temper grew and grew until it boiled over. He picked up his glass of vodka and threw it across the room, sailing at incredible speed until it impacted upon the wall just over the aging Spodkovsky's head. The foreign minister winced as particles of glass and the vodka sprinkled over his head. Seven bad were days, roared Rajevsky. All of what we have done for nothing, how bad were dare they? Spaskovsky was used to the vol volatile temper. He knew how to weather the storm's silence. His mouth formed in a curt scowl as he watched his master rage about. I will never forgive Hitler's bad word henchmen, Rojewski continued. They have forgotten their roots. Rojewski paused for a second, catching his breath before continuing, and they will regret their ignorance of our cause. The tension would pass and Spaskovsky uh, would be dismissed. As he went home, grateful that the Vaz rage was limited to his office, and not him, he reflected on the cause of the outburst, silence from Germany following Rajewski's outreach of friendship. Once home, he sighed and reminded himself that he needed to find someone else to bring bad news to the Vaz. The Germans have betrayed us. God dang it. Ah, oh, the Germans. Why? Why? I, I, you know what? I'm not going to begin the invasion. I want to be us on the defense so we don't get a uh, war support penalty hit, so they can go to war with us. I'm, I'm not doing that. No way, man. But anyways, we do have some peepee -pee here, and we love the peepee. -pee. Uh, go and stop training for now just because... We're going to, hey, look, 8.9%, not bad. Just because, yeah, you never know when those guys are going to attack. So these guys are good. Already very good. 40 combo with tanks. Obviously, we're going to start working on some tanks. But we'll see what happens. Hopefully, we can quickly win, which I doubt we will. But uh, we need to, oh, that's it. 56. Wow, that's expensive. That's very expensive. We didn't get that far yet. Um, but, uh, yeah. We need to save a lot of our PPD core, a lot of the stuff. So, and we're improving things very quickly here. Relatively quickly. Even power is getting better. Not by much, though. Yeah, it's going very slowly. Our new provinces, though. Nice. And what decisions do we have? Oh, let me close it one out. anti Najua propaganda? Are they overpowering? Raid their supplies? We lose some manpower? That's not very good. It assassinate Kim Il-sung? Well, I don't want to do this, but we have to. And by the time we core this, we should get all this population too. I mean, that's that's so much. Two-thirds of a million. That could really help us out. And we're currently on what? Two-year draft? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Now, this is extremely important to keep an eye on and slow things down. There you go. That's good. Go and go there too, because they already have cast over there as well. Um, put the early cast over here as well. So far, I like the green. Obviously, it just began, but still. Oh, they're starting. Oh, hello. Hello. Okay, not bad. First assault. We've killed 20,000. We're taking 3,000 casualties. Not bad. Oh, no. Keep boosting that thing up, son. Keep boosting it up. Okay, now, this is going a lot better than I thought it would. I mean, they have a lot of divisions. Doesn't mean they're any good, though. Um, They're almost out of artillery. Jesus Christ. Guns? Only three different... What have you been doing this entire time? Th See, this is a problem with focusing on the populace too much. They make themselves too weak. Too weak. And we got better planes. Let's go and grab some better artillery, actually. 10% more soft attack is good with us. I mean, very modern jet fighters already. Thank you, Japan. Jesus Christ, you killed off so many people. These guys are even, aren't even that great. They really are not. But they have 
hundreds of thousands of men to use. If we had that much manpower, we could win pretty pretty quickly. But still, my goodness. Actually, oh, West Siberian Republic. Oh, I hope these guys win. I don't want to fight the WRF. I really don't. Um, what what's in the template here? So let's take a look. The motorized are probably sixteen combat with max, maybe twelve combat with perhaps. Uh, the infantry, let's see, they're probably they could, uh, I don't know twenty to forty combat with actually. <clears throat> these guys, wow. Oh, hold on, we can look at it here. This at least this division is probably twenty combat with I would say, maybe twenty combat with ten. If it's twelve, that's twenty four. Yeah, maybe. I mean, sometimes the AI does like to use like 27 combat width sometimes, which is very, very odd, but still. We've lost 12,000. We've caught up 160,000. Jesus Christ. Nice. So we finish all that up. Let's do glory and labor. There's a sort of poetic achievement in the lifestyle of the factory worker. A romantic ideal of a man so interested in furthering his nation and achieving the greatness of not just of himself, but of his community. Who shows the dedication of his family, of his community, and ultimately of his people and sacrifices for much of the good of the nation. The Russian is a man who should be proud of his labor. Our factory workers work hard to achieve the best for the nation, and it has begun to show. But we need to capitalize on the increasing of efficiency, and encourage our nascent industrial base to work even harder than it already does. We need to instill in our people the idea that glory is in labor, and that our work our industrial soldiers do is for the good of the state, and for the good of the god, for the good of the vazed. Very nice. We actually lose Westport, which is not good. And we lose stability here, too. Huh. Alright, please. Can we please assassinate Kim Il Song? That'd be so cool. A letter to Congress to the corrupt Zionist snakes of the U.S. Congress. By all that is holy on this earth, you would be hard-pressed to find a larger collection of corrupt kleptocrats, disgusting race traders, and power-hungry Jews. Do you really think you're accomplishing anything gathering in your so-called capital building like fat pigs with a feeding trough? Perhaps it would be more forgiving if you weren't feeding on the hopes and dreams of thousands of suffering Americans. If only they knew how many of their problems are caused by the all-powerful elites who claim to represent them, on one hand, while pillaging their wealth and destroying their racial identity on the other. The only thing I find worse than your blight and greed and suspicious uh, Jewish ways is the decadent and broken system your Congress represents. Democracy? What a joke! I'm going to take this opportunity to call it like it is. A farce. You allow your people to vote, but you and I both know that this is all just smoke and mirrors. The powerful Jews who subtly pull the strings of your country are the ones who decide the next fool to lead America to its inevitable ruin, not the people. It's quite clear that America is a nation of blind sheep led by Jewish wolves. America is destined to fail, and that is a fact. You allow women to hold powerful political offices, and yet you still claim that America is the greatest nation on earth? Such is the way of the Jew. Once the Zionists gets their way, and fears will attempt to run roughshed over everyone else. The day will come soon, and I'm sure it won't be long when American people will realize just how misled they really are, and take matters into their own hands. Rot and heck. Konstantin Vladimirovich Rajevsky, Vaz of Holy Russia. That'll show them. Yeah, that'll show them. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, weekly vampire trip. Why not? Yeah, that's really hurting our... Manpower section now? Even though we did make two more divisions, so that makes sense. There you go. Save some of our manpower and keep spending. Two a quarter million. They've got the 54 divisions. They've made a few more, it looks like maybe. Two years of modernity? They have so much manpower though. It's ridiculous. They're good they're gonna run out, they already ran out of guns, apparently. They've already ran out of guns. And you guys are coming on here, huh? You know, you might be actually be able to do something here, maybe. Oh, a little bit of lag. What's going on? I'm not really sure. Civil so, oh, war. Yemen is, is dying. That's cool. That's fine enough. Whatever. We still have to be careful, though. And didn't we have an intelligence agency? No, we don't. Eh, going great one. I want to get some spies so we can uproot their entrenchment. That'd be good. Thank you. But we still have to be careful where we attack. Um, we're not out of the doghouse yet. That's way too many. Um, over here might be... Might work for us quite well, but we'll see. Oh no, it's looking pretty good so far. Very good. Very good. Equipment. We need more cast, but what else is new? Okay, well, glory and labor. I guess we'll go here to do it next. Why not? Nice. Uh, lower wages, longer hours. Work harder, not smarter. I'm not paying you to work smart. We need to reach a quota, otherwise I won't get my bonus and I won't be paying any of you. Back to work before I really lose my temper. Who said that workers need comfortable hours and generous salaries? Where did that get that it's so obvious? Our workers will work for the nation that they're proud of without good money or hours. Our industrial base is still pitifully low compared to the, what we need it to be. And in order to ensure that we continued productivity of our factories and the economic well-being of the all-Russian state continues, we need to slash wages to increase governmental and privatized income and increase hours work to further increase productivity. Right now, we cannot afford disharmony among our workers even if they are working harder than ever. 
Nice. I'd love to just do like a generic attack, but that's not going to win us any favors right now. I wonder if there are any airplanes in the air. I made sure that we got planes. No? They do have some planes, but we have way more than them. Yes, better weapons. Yes, 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 yes. Better guns. Ah, oh, we're not going to do that yet. Breakthrough. Let's get some more breakthrough in defense. Come on, guys. Attack us again, please. That was a lot of fun. There you go. Not bad. Just slowly we will take him out. Goodbye, Tokyo Standoff. Nice, there you go. Quarter million deaths are not enough for these guys. Which is kind of insane, but whatever. Um, Yeah, five divisions is quite a few. I'm not taking down here, though. We do have the motorized down here, too, which is very good. And the motorized are getting there quickly. Oh, yes. Please attack us some more. U.S. Japanese Treaty signed. The winds of change in the Pacific. Oh, boy. Good. Weaken them, weaken them, weaken them. We're still working on cities. And actually, we can probably keep doing this. Because we'll probably need to get this stuff done as fast as possible. So, Nice. Over almost a third of a million dead. My goodness. Insane. But survival the fittest. The Russian is inherently a strong individual who comes from a strong stock. This is one of our racial traits imbued in all of us when we are born. These brave men work hard to achieve our vision of a strong and industrialized Russia. However, it's no secret that some of the less than committed workers have been feeling as if they are unable to work the longer hours with lower pay. Some of them have even gone some for, so far as to complain that it's detrimental to their physical health. Nonsense. No true Russian would have an issue with the policies that we've implemented. The Bobs wouldn't have implemented them otherwise. Clearly, these individuals aren't cut out for our factories or our state. Steklov and a number of other high-up government officials have begun to propose a survival of the fittest strategy, an unofficial policy which will remove the weakest and least able of our society who wish to be, who will be replaced with the true Russians that we seek. Bring us the disgust of demons. Michael and his friends began their trek home from the factory in relatively good cheer. While the work was backbreaking, it was at the very least put food on the table for their families. When they were finally over the shifts, they had celebrated with a few shots so they had started their walk home. However, the good cheer did not last long. As they turned a corner, they passed by a bar frequented by soldiers of the all-Russian government. A small group of soldiers broke off from their position at the entryway and drunkenly stumbled their way in front of the group. Lou, uh, these uh, bad word mongrels, thinking they could just walk by the bettas without paying the toll. A particularly burly man at the front of the group spoke with a heavy slur. His friends had spread out among Michael's group. Look at here, rats. You're going to cough up your rubles and you can go your own way. If you don't, me and my friends are going to make you wish you had never crawled out of your uh, bad word cave. Please, sir, we're just trying to get home, please, Michael said, nearly in hysterics. If they lost what little money they had, it was likely they would end up starving to death. Before he could continue, the man slammed his fist into his stomach. The air was forced out of his lungs, and he fell to his knees as they laughed around him. Before the man could continue his being, a loud whistle broke through the air. From down the street marched a grizzled and absolutely livid-looking sergeant. What the bad word do you think you're doing, you bad word reprobates? Get your butts back to the barracks before I personally skin your hides. The look on the man's face made it seem as if he was dead serious. Michael opened his mouth to thank him, but it snapped shut when he saw the row. Undiscuss, undisguised disgust he had for him and his friends. Even when they help us, they hate us. Yeah, things happen. Let them keep butchering their men as we read another thing. Work the blood. While our policies to weed out the weakest have been successful, there has been developed a certain dearth of available workers because of it. Not to worry, position, position Stiklov, who claims to have already come up with a solution that would not only fix our lack of industrial workers, but wouldn't cost us a dime extra. The individuals who currently populate our hard labor camps are the ones who are the least dire of our political prisoners and most dire of our dissenters, are well of manpower just waiting to be tapped. Currently, they're relegated to civilian industries at best, typically being forced to mine, build infrastructure, depending on how comfortable an assignment they get, to work in civilian industries. However, where the camps overflowing with prisoners and not enough civilian jobs for them to do. Why can't they just work to build us guns and ammo? They don't need pay, and the only the most cursory of instruction would be required for them to start building weapons of war. Why not? Nice. Yeah, we're good to do it. Work the blood. Cool. I don't think that'll really go by too far, but we'll see what happens. Oh, we can choose agency first, too. Andre? Yes. No one here, but okay, whatever. They've lost almost 400,000 men. And they're out of manpower. That's actually really good for us. Now, let's really beat the crap out of them. Nice. Very good. Actually, we could probably make an instrument here too if we wanted to. 
Um, take you to go there, and take you to go down to here to there. Very good. Hopefully they're moving there quickly enough, though. We still have a slight bit of manpower. That's good. And boom. We're not even in there yet. Wow. Come on. Go, 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 go. Actually, you know what? It doesn't really matter if we do this. There you go. They're dead. <clears throat> if that's the case, we're going to wait. Let's wait a little bit. They're still... Oh, we're still attacking them a little bit. That's fine. But that's... Good, good, good. We've only killed off 430,000 of them. And then we will go in a new economy. With a new Russian state comes a new economy. Built upon the lines that brought a glory and success to the Nazis in their halcyon days, the all-Russian government's economy has already begun to show the early successes of the system. We've repurposed the civilian laborers to the military, we've streamlined and made efficient the rest of our industry, begun the mass corporatization of our society, and started the creation of the first corporations that will lead Russia towards their strong and glorious future. We have a long road ahead of us, but we have laid the foundations for what will be powerful, influential, and international economy that will be able to forge Russia a presence on the world stage for God, nation, and labor, of course. Keep spending. And we can cut that down, too. That's fine. Alright, so there. Same number. Hmm. God, I just want to do a general attack so badly. So badly, man. Um. Four divisions is just so much. We're going to push into here and push into here. Maybe. Actually, it would be better to attack right there, but whatever. Agency infiltration is nice. Actually, you can do anything yet for Kim Il Sung. No, that sucks. So, oh, they're still attacking. Say nice, good. Let them waste their pathetic little lives. Because I want to make an encirclement here-ish, maybe. So that's why I want to push into here a little bit more. Good. Any damage you do, they cannot recover from. Unless they may raise more, you know, population. But you never know. They might be able to do that too. Good. Then we gotta go there, there. Um, you guys go here, maybe. Take you as well, and then go up there. You should be able to do pretty darn well. Especially if we help support the attack some more. Nice. Civilian budget boost. No, keep going, doing that. Nice, and we'll encircle five divisions, even though they're extremely weak. That's okay with us. There you go. All that matters is that we defeat them. That's all I care about. Better base bleed. Nice. Don't let them get over there. Come on, new economy is good. Nice. And let's go ahead and do the free all... All-Russian Air Force. The Free All-Russian Army may be the grandest land force that the Far East has seen in perhaps decades, but they are just that a land force. Now that we've captured the Cheryomovsky Air Base, we can begin to look towards the skies with the intent of making them the next domain of dominance for the brave Russian warrior. With the air base under our control, a decent pool of men to draw from, and our eastern benefactors more likely more than willing to provide us with the material and training that we need to create a new generation of jet pilots, it seems that the Free All-Russian Air Force is not only easily attainable, but just around the corner. Nice. These guys really don't want to die yet. That's weird. You don't want to die? Now they're dead. And now they're approaching half a million. Very good. Well, that dead is not bad. If we can get to the first stage of like fighting these, uh, fighting the, in the Far East, this is not as, nearly as bad as it could be. But it's just a lot of preparation. Passive defense is nice. Department of the economy. Now this is not good over here. Um, hmm. I'm going to do something like that, maybe. Beat the living crap out of them. That's good, good, good. I'm really tempted to just do a general attack or something. 2v2. Nice. Just keep beating the crap out of them. Hmm. I don't really want to mess with the stuff in the north yet. I don't want to take in that tile. There's really not a, a lot of good tiles where we can take. Maybe you guys can take that, maybe? The, less fac the, the more factories we take from them, though, of course, the more factories we get, and the less they're able to produce weapons and stuff, so... 
Are they attacking us again? Oh, nice. Good. As they should. Very good, very good, very good. Go ahead and move into here, too. We are Russian Air Force. Followed up with Japanese designs. We cannot have an Air Force without planes, and the few planes that we have are from eras far gone. It would be laughable to put these ancient beasts in the sky, however. With little experience in the way of the jets and modern aircraft, even our most gifted pilots and designers would have trouble coming up with working designs. There is an answer, and it lies in Tokyo. The Japanese have thus far been highly generous with the amount of material, economic, and technological support that they have afforded us thus far. Our contacts in the Japanese capital have already indicated to us that the Japanese would be more than willing to provide us not only with designs, but actual jets. That would be able to jumpstart the free all Russian Air Force. Of course, these jets won't be cheap, but then again, what is with the sphere? Nothing is cheap with the sphere. Only over half a million dead enemies. No manpower, 66 factories, no guns, no artillery pieces. They're looking really bad, actually. But not bad enough. They're still attacking us, huh? They still think they can win against us, huh? Well, they can try. Alright, I just want to try General Tech. I really do. Looks kind of promising. Kind of promising already. Not bad. Hop out right there, guys, if you can. Actually, you guys go right there. That should help out quite a bit more, right? There you go. And once we break them, I mean, they're pretty much already broken anyways, but still. It's going to take some manpower to do this, but that's okay. And we're going to do this before we actually go ahead and uh, go to the next stage. They're attacking us. We attack them right on back. Because they have literally no manpower. So any damage we do, they can get back. Stockholm Conference fails. Nice. So close to 1970. Mm, anything for artillery. Eh, 151. Engineering. Ah, eh, we'll do that one. Why not? They lost 10 more factories, which is great, great, great. We're out, running out of manpower, too, which is not good. We captured the railway junction. If you want to do about that, please go ahead. We get more speed and less supply consumption and more construction speed, which is really, really good. So we did that. Expand Cheryomushki. Despite its control on the Cheryomushki Air Base, by far the largest in the Far East, it is pitifully outdated. Built to the house proper... Pro Propeller planes and any plans for modernization abandoned during the initial collapse of the Union. While Cheryomushki is our greatest asset in the creation and fielding of a modern air force, that doesn't mean we can't be improved. We should expand the airbase and modernize it to make sure that not only it has space for the greatest numbers of jets that we have planned to keep there, but also longer runways to take into account the longer lead that the jets need, as well as modern air traffic control towers and mechanisms. We'll turn this airship into the airport of the future. Great. Alright, so now we're starting to lose a little bit more, which is not good. Where is that motorized? Oh, you're up there. What the heck? Alright, so they've lost quite a few divisions, actually, already, which is very good. I want to see if you could potentially make an encirclement here, maybe. That'd be really good if you could. It'll help them out here. Oh, you're already doing other stuff. Wait, hold on. Go right there. Because I don't want to get encircled. Good. Go in, go in. We're out of manpower, which is not good at all. God dang it, how did you let them live? Go in, go in and kill them off. How do they have this many divisions, man? How? How? That's insane. It's going to do click on all these. I don't even really care. It doesn't matter to me. Good. Why don't you guys... Come on. Stop lacking so hard. Go over there to go there. And then you guys go down there to go there. And circle everyone in the south. 
and then the free All-Russian Navy. With the entirety of the Russian Far East under our command, it's time that we took stock of our naval capacity, unfortunately. It's a no small, small task. When we were cloistered in Zaya, the free All-Russian Navy was little more than a paper naval force. Even now, as we consolidate our hold on the new territory that we have won or with no small sacrifice in blood, the wise of Oz looks to the ocean to create firmly the new free All-Russian Navy. And with the Navy comes a requirement for ships. And with these ships, we will come the protection of our trade in the beginning of a new Russian dawn in the Pacific. All of our enemies shall tremble in the front of the might that shall be the Russian Pacific fleet. Very good. You guys do the exact same thing. You do not let them live. No living for these guys. Uh, nothing really there. Nothing too much. Good, 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 good. Lots of green. More green. More green. More green. Not enough green yet. Guys, go. You know what? Just go. Go straight for Tomsk or something. We've lost 47,000 versus 700,000, which is not bad at all. Which I would say is pretty darn good. Oh, we got the basin. Great. Great. We got that Nova Siberia's aircraft plant. Nice. There you go. Nice. Whoever was in there is going to die. We got him. That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Actually, can we take out Kazakhstan? That would be really cool if we could. Go ahead and integrate all these guys. All that manpower is going to be super, super important. So against Siberian War. Nope. Japanese relations. Nope. Regional de development. Well, we could technically go ahead and do the reunification of Russia, but that will change our focus tree. So I don't want to do that yet. We already have enough stability anyway, so not bad. Really not bad. Could be a lot worse. Could be done a lot, lot worse. So we'll do that one. Pretty good. And, uh, huh. These guys are struggling over here quite a bit. Which is fine with us. And then we'll do resources for warships. The Japanese have thus far provided themselves to be a helpful, fickle people. However, our Navy needs ships, and if the Japanese have one thing, it's too many of them. Thus, we should look to them, discuss with them the potential for buying their ships off of them. At the very least, some older models that will assist in the creation of a core all-Russian force. Sure, it might mean that we would have to concede further our access and extraction of Siberia's rich richness, specifically the tungsten mines that the Japanese megacorporations have long eyeing in Magadan Central Land. However, these concessions will be a small price to pay in return for what we will get. A vast and comprehensive fleet, the most modern of Japanese ships. As well as a job offer? Pardon Yumashev's men press specifically in his service? Walk the plank. Our reserves will receive an influx of cash. Pardon? We don't pardon people here. The job offer? No, 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 no. For those who all shall not cooperate, for those who shall not forsake their insipid and ingenuine belief for a Soviet cause, there shall be no mercy. Those who will not work for us and assist in the creation of our new navy has little use to us, not even being fit to work in the most des desolate of our minds, these individuals. Whoever refuse our offer shall be rounded up and shot, for they are not only a waste of skin, but a danger to the regime. In a similar vein, not all of the, wor the ships that we inherited from Yumashev were in working or even salvageable condition. These ships, some so unsuited to the seas, that it would be unlaughable. But this does not mean that they are useless. In fact, many of these ancient naval beasts are rich in the exact same materials that our guns, artillery, and tanks are made of. For those ships that cannot work, we will, they will serve as their vase in a different way, as scrap. We've got a lot of building to do here still. A lot of civvy building. I wonder if we can ever get the Cicada Islands back. Nice. Cool. Now let time go on. Minus 4.8 billion. 57 billion in GDP. That is so good. So, when can we do this again? <laughs> Support weapons? Nice. Happy 1970, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. More industry for the people? That's all for the people. Walk the plank, yar. And we'll do the strong army, too. And... Nice. The Vaz New Arsenal. The handover ceremony was short and unmemorable, with speeches by both the Japanese and Rodzhevsky. With the five former Imperial Japanese destroyers that have been given to the free all-Russian Navy, increasing the firepower of the Russian arsenal. The offer being accepted by the Japanese shows their growing interest with them and the possibilities of friendship on the horizon. The ships are to be added to the growing Russian fleet, and some of the most advanced in our Navy. While the hulls may be slightly outdated and the ships stripped of, its, of their missiles, they are still state-of-the-art compared to the rest of our Navy. Better weapons and equipment capabilities far surpass our own designs, and we believe that these ships will continue to be reliable for us to years to come. We thank the Japanese for their generous offer and a strong army. An effective army isn't a strong army. 
At least this is what the vase has exclaimed. The vase demands that we provide it. A strong army is one that has a strong sword, and for us, a sword is our firearm. Every man has one, a weapon that is easy to learn and hard to master. It kicks like a mule and hits worse. But as the years have dragged on, we found that these rifles have become obsolete. The vase has requested that our army have the latest and greatest equipment, and this is something that we can do. We will order a gunsmith to examine the Kalashnikov, which originally came from the far west. They will break it down to its most basic components and examine what could be improved, what could be better, and what they recommend, what changes they believe to be best. The free all Russian army deserves nothing short of the best weapons, and they and that is what they shall get. Absolutely. Better artillery? Very good. Industry? Research speed? Yes, please. Nice. Um, what do we can do? What, can we do something else here? Oh, we can do... Oh, we do the Japanese stuff. Um, electronics don't, doesn't really matter anymore, just because all I do is pretty much... Well, I get, uh, we can still do it. Because we have nothing to do with our PP, so... Still high relations, which is very good. Second Siberian War, very good. It looks like the blue group here is probably going to die, but we'll see what happens. Ah, uh, no, they're actually pushing out of the you know, maybe a little bit. Yeah, we'll see. They're kind of pushing over there, but whatever. A strong army. Very good, very good. We still have no manpower. Do we core everything? We might have. No, we haven't yet. Okay, that's good. We still have about a week left. And we will convert our guys to uh, just thicker divisions. Just the thickest boys you can see. That you'll ever see. Nice. Virtue tanks as well. And engineers, artillery, that's good. Make two. 40 combo widths. Well, all of you guys, except for you, will get huge. And you are all going to become huge as well. There you go. I already converted some of those, like, four of those divisions to 40 combo widths earlier, so that's great. And we should have quite a bit more manpower to deal with. 32 divisions so far, not bad. 129 factories. Not enough, obviously. And we barely have any population. Of course, anyway, we just converted our guys to like 40 combo with, so what do you expect, you know? Wow, that's really not bad at all. Holy crap. That's really good, actually. Do we have free military? Oh, wow, okay. We're making a lot of casts. Um, tanks? APCs? Yeah, we could use a few more tanks. There you go. There you go. And then do some of that, too. Fighters and tanks and all that good stuff. Oh my. Strong army. And we're done with the focus tree here, so let's go and reunify our part of uh, Russia. The Siberian National State. In which we'll do into the Atomic Age. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Just because it's the same for every single one of these. Wow, we got all that manpower now? Holy crap, that's awesome. Uh, if you want to read about these, please go right ahead. Uh, and we'll do a foundation for research. Address the Iranian problem. Expand the Siberian mines. Source for materials. If you want to read about that, let's go as well. On to certain future. Chase the sun. And then we will also go ahead and do one step closer. With the central Siberia under our belt, though through no small effort, the boss has begun to reflect upon himself and the achievements that has led to his people and his party towards. One step closer. As a statement that his advisors continually congratulate him with. They were right, of course. One step closer, indeed. This is but one big step. Uh... The Russian Fascist Party is no longer a small footnote in the history of the city of Halbim, and Konstantin Rozevsky is certainly no bad king like his former detractors attempted to call him. It's time for the Vaz to become the man that Russia needs him to be. Reliant on the Japanese and hopeful for the Germans no longer. Russia shall stand on her own, and the brave Vaz at her helm. One step closer. With the central Siberia under our belt, through no small effort, the Vaz has begun to reflect upon himself and the achievements that he has led his people and his party towards. One step closer is a statement that his advisors continually congratulate him with. They were right, of course, one step closer indeed. But this one step is a big one. The Russian fascist party is no longer a small footnote in the history of the city of Habim, and Konstantin Rozhevsky is certainly no bandit king like his former detractors attempted to call him. A stand for the boss to become the man that Russia needs him to be. Reliant on the Japanese and hopeful for the Germans no longer. Russia shall stand on her own with a brave Vaz at her helm, which is very good. Oh, what do we have over here? Extra influence? Ah, oh, yeah, it's going to do that one. That's fine. We could do military intervention. Um, If these guys don't do anything, we... I might wait to do that one. Maybe maybe we'll wait. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm just going to spend our PP for that. That's fine. Does it matter? Anything else? No, not yet. Not yet. We don't need the Japanese equipment anymore anyway, so... um, Go and do that first. Do you need to spend any more? 10.6 billion is pretty good. Uh, are we, we're demobilizing if we do that, so I'll just keep spending that. That's fine. It doesn't really matter at all. Military intervention. Oh, yes. We do that one. Yes. Uh, 
the Vaz of the National State. But let's go ahead and do uh, our reclaimed lands. That's not too bad. Oh, civvies are pretty good. Let's do that one. Redouble economic development. The fact is the Far East are churning out more weapons of war than they ever have. On top of that, industrial growth and our nation's GDP is skyrocketing. Clearly, the Vaz economic plan, heavily based on what on the one that characterized what was once the economic superpower known as Nazi Germany is working, but it's not enough. The plan needs to be expanded, quotas increased, and slaves found and hours increased further. The system needs to be exported and applied to central Siberia where the disgustingly generous conditions of the workers has led to them being decadent and expecting that we bend to their desires. Never shall we pander to the legacy of the Bolsheviks, these Reds will learn, at the end of a bayonet if need be, a real work ethic, and the importance of working towards something greater than self-indulgence. The Vaz of the National State Rozhevsky dumped his overcoat down and felt the warmth of the bedroom spread through his aching bones, since his consolidation of power over central Siberia. He had rejected sleep for regular midnight walks through the bitter winds of Amur, his mind racing with visions of the future. He turned to his bed. Once it looked so warm and inviting, a haven to rest his thundering head and ignore the crushing bleakness of reality now. It was just an empty little distraction in the corner of the room. There was so much to be, work to be done, the Siberian national state had spread far and wide, crushing all resistance under the glorious expanse of his army. Communist government had fallen under the threads of his tanks, petty warlords had been eviscerated by the onslaught of his air force, and did generous have been gunned down by the brave infantrymen. His grand vision was brutally forced its way from the tiny frozen wasteland of Amur throughout the shattered realm of Siberia. It was the vase of the Russian people. His stagger had transformed into a purposeful stride. His depressed grimace had twisted into a sneer of superiority. Men did not look up upon him with apathy or pity, but genuine fear and respect. Throughout the unconquered plains of Russia, ethnic Russians looked towards this impending triumph with joy, while the Judeo Bolsheviks rats scuttled away in horror. An enticing bottle of vodka was waiting for him. He wrapped his fingers and his numb fingers around it, raised it to his parched throat, and stopped. With a grunt, he forced himself to pour a small glass, which he then gulped in one down down in one gulp, and another just for good measure. History oh, would speak of the Vaz's rise of power as greater than Hitler's and the story of the Russian national state greater than that of the German Reich. For the first time in decades, the sting of vodka and bile did not affect his mouth, only the taste of victory. The specter of fascism haunts the East. Very cool. The German model? Less goods from goods, less stability, less war support, more construction speed. I like that. The German model. The Germans are many things. The deceptive liars, failed national socialists, weak-willed inferiors, however. The Vaz would never claim that their economic model, one of the only reasons that they were able to be so successful for so long, is anything but a recipe for success. And the system itself is certainly admirable. Thus, we should continue to emulate the plan, ensuring that we adhere perfectly to the ways in which the Vaz was planning to repurpose the German model for our own means. And make sure that, like in the East, it is applied in Central Siberia to the letter. It may not be the easiest life so art, Nick, but at the very least, you can sing while you work. Besides, the slaves are the ones doing all the dangerous stuff. Remember, Swartnik, for God, nation, and labor. Our favorite slogan here. Not bad. We're building up a lot of this stuff. But civvies have a place ahead of infrastructure, which is very, very good. And maybe we'll end with two more focuses, maybe, perhaps? Oh, what do we have here? Military invention, of course. Anything else in there? No. Oh, yeah, it's this stuff. It's strong. Keep killing it. Keep killing them. Oh, look at like this. Repurpose the Siberian plan. Nikolai Bukharin is a man that lived in infamy, especially to the Russian fascist party and its head, the Vaz himself. He may be a Bolshevik and worse still, influenced by the Jewish Zionist elites, but that is not to say that stop the clock. That a stop clock is right twice a day. In the Siberian plan, which saw the vast and rapid industrialization of Russia east of the Ural, saw massive optic and industrial productivity in places where there used to be none. And now, with almost of Siberia under our direct control, this has paid off for us quite in weight. The Vaz believes that the Siberian plan and its legacy can be repurposed in order to facilitate the transition to the Vaz regime, or vision, reforging it to ensure that we can guarantee that our Russia will be an industrial giant. Our reclaimed lands. Uh, yeah, why not? Our war for the control of Central Siberia was a bloody one, which cost us no small amount of casualties, be they military or political. And so the boss has a vested interest in not just extending our administration to this area, but to ensure that, as soon as possible, falls in line with this vision. To do this, many eggs will need to be broken. The workers' comfortable, generous concessions must be whipped into shape. The ideological opponents to our regime must be purged, either being shot or enslaved. And the dissenters, be they from the highest or lowest rungs of society, must be rooted out and eliminated, of course. Like rats, communists, or Jews. They hide in plain sight, and thus a grand decree of terror must be inflicted upon the populace of central Siberia. Only at the end of this terror will the area be ready for integration into the all-Russian government. But I think we've got to end it here for today because this video's gone on long enough. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will see who we will beat up because both of these sides have lost all their manpower. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day!